Hello everybody and welcome to a new video. So in this video we are working with the Kinect as you can see and we are especially working with the DP Kinect object from Dale Foro. I hope my pronunciation is correct enough which allows us to work with the Kinect uh, on Windows uh, using a Kinect 2. So the Kinect 2 that I'm using at the moment is the basic one so this model here plus the DP Kinect 2 external from Dale Foro. Right so it's pretty straightforward to install. And in this video I want to show you how we can uh, make uh, our point cloud audio reactive. So very simple stuff, it's not going to be particularly fancy. So let me show you what we are going to reach, something like that. So. Not particularly crazy, just a bit of audio reactiveness. Alright, so the usual stuff. Great, <laughs> I'm still pretty much distorted. Let me get back here. And uh, cool, so let's actually start from scratch. So I will delete a couple of things. Good, so this is what we are left with, uh, which is basically just an SF play to load some audio into our patch. An average object which we will use with absolute mode, which basically is an envelope follower for our uh, audio. Then we got a JIT catch which I didn't even use, uh, we will see if we if we use it or not. And then simply a key object uh, to start and stop the audio with the spacebar. Great. So the first thing we need is the DP Kinect 2 object, so let's get it. dp.kinect2. Let's open the help file and go into point cloud and let's copy all these part exactly, then close it. Let's delete the object, let's put it here. Let's delete all the stuff we don't need. We don't actually need this GGL render because we already have our JIT world. Let's delete that. Let's delete this click to start. Let's go inside a Kinex setup. We don't need this metro because we will connect our own uh, metro from the JIT world. Uh, let's connect this here. Right, depth point. So let's try if this works. Uh, it doesn't work. I think we need to change the depth only player from 8 to 1. That's the mode that will allow us to have our point cloud, so let's try. Let's activate the Kinect. Okay, there is nothing. Uh, let's specify that the mesh should draw into game, which is the name of my rendering context. We don't need the axis, actually. We don't care about that. Oh, we don't need actually that. Let's actually connect this uh, simply to points. We don't need the erase thing because this was working with the renderer, which we don't need at all. Send is here, send is here. Do we actually need the body thing? Actually not even sure we need the body thing because uh, this was this was made like that in order to send a message correctly to the renderer, but I don't think this is the case anymore for us. So that, that's actually the color. So let's send this here. And this is the point cloud. Should go here, great. This is not working because we also need to send the metro, so a bang to the DB Kinect for every frame. So great. When we connect the metro from our world, then we get actually our point cloud. I lost myself. Here, here I am. Oh, other way around. Um, great. So, right. So we need actually to reverse this point cloud because it's the other way around for the moment. So I'm moving around with the camera using the WASD uh, QZ keys and using anim drive as we did in already countless other tutorials and great we got our point cloud working so this is all the steps that we need to do in order to get the point cloud out of the dp kinect 2 great so let's now create a jit gen which we will use to modify our position of our vertices of the point cloud so first of all let's use also jit uh, fps gui to check what are the dimensions so type flow 32 dimensions 512 by 424 planes is going to be uh, four planes. Why is this four planes? Let's get a JIT cell block and examine what is it actually in those planes. So let's get plane number three, the fourth one, to see what's actually inside it. Just a bunch of zero and ones. Okay, interesting. Let's see actually what's inside the four planes using a matrix. So let's switch W here. Switch W, output without on the on second output. Let's create a GTP window and check what's inside the four plane. 
Uh, great, so it's basically one or zero according to our depth map. So when the depth map encounters something, it gives us a one apparently, otherwise it will give us a zero. Okay, great, so let's delete this stuff, we don't need it. Uh, let's uh, get the dimensions here, good. So let's go inside the gen, let's delete that. Great, uh, let's start by um, rotating our three-dimensional point cloud, so we don't have to actually rotate the camera. Because by default, when we start, you can see that uh, the image is actually the other way around. So we need to multiply the z-axis by minus one, I believe. So let's do something like this. Say so it's x. So let's do the three axes. And uh, let's recreate the vector. But this time, we will uh, multiply the z by minus one in order to rotate our image. Let's see if this works. Right. So if I reset the camera, exactly we have that uh, uh, the image is rotated, but now the, the, the x and the, the x axis is reversed. So uh, another solution instead of doing that could be actually to just rotate our GGL mesh object. So instead of rotating through using uh, uh, modifying our vertices, we would just rotate the wall matrix of this object with the rotating six so zero 180 on the epsilon and zero great so anim reset great now this is actually correct uh it still not doesn't work like a mirror because actually my right end is represented here as my on the on my left so we could still reverse the x but actually it doesn't really matter if you want to do it then you can do it but for the moment it's not really important so great, let's now create a little offset uh, that we will use to center our point cloud in the center of the world. So let's do like this, param offset 0, 0, 0. And uh, let's actually sum these uh, to our vector. So this is simply an offset that we are applying to, to uh, the position of our vertices. Great, so let's create a pack object, say offset f, f, f. There we go. Connect is here, not here, but here. F, F, F. Great. Great, so let's move, for example, the z-axis. Great, so now we are centering uh, our point cloud uh, in our world as we want. For example, if I want to have it a bit more on the right, exactly, I would center it like that. Okay, amazing. Uh, let's now do the audio reaction. So let's do something like that. So let me start the audio and uh, let's do something like this. Yeah, we will do something really simple actually. So let's create a parameter, uh, let's say prepend audio amp. Uh, let's give it a value of zero. Oops, <laughs> I don't have to put prepend, silly me. Great. You can actually also hard code the values of our offset inside the, the param uh, ERNG gen if we are, when we are satisfied with them. For example, here we can write minus 1.3 minus 0 0.48 for the x, great. Uh, so let's attach the param audio amp, which is the, um, the envelope follower here of our um, audio file. We actually loop the audio file here uh, from the play bar. Let's go inside the JIT gen. And uh, I don't know, let's use, for example, let's simply sum that to the z-axis. Great, so we have uh, we have that our z-axis is basically related to the envelope uh, of our audio amplitude, but we can do better than that. So let's do something like this. Let's create a JITBFG object, one plane, float 32, let's uh, say 100 by 100. Let's give it a basis. Let's go with the, our beloved noise simplex. And why we are not using JIT, uh, GLBFG, which outputs a texture, some of you could think, uh, oh, are not textures better than matrix? Well, not in this case, because we are working simply. The array that comes out from the, G the DP Kinect object is actually a matrix so if we will mix this with a texture this will become incredibly slow so if we are in matrix world is and we cannot go into texture world so into gl world as is the case here it's much better to always use matrices and not mix matrices and textures together all right just to take away every doubt that could still be there so let's actually give it a third uh, dimension of one so we will change the offset of these according to only on the third dimension Let's create a message, say offset zero, zero dollar one, and let's make it follow by a bang. 
Great, so we will use the audio amplitude now as an offset for the third dimension of the GTBFG. So we'll do something like this, we will create an accumulator of uh, float numbers. So we will do it uh, as the ancient, so by hand. So we will do simply do something like that. We will just create a loop, a feedback loop, and uh, simply send our float amplitude value uh, here. So whatever comes in gets summed by whatever uh, was coming out. And the result uh, we could uh, multiply by something small. And this will become the offset for the third dimension, great. So the bigger is this value, the bigger is going to be the, the change related always to the amplitude of our audio file. Uh, let's actually use a F object so we don't uh, waste uh, resources by displaying a float number there. Great. Cool, uh, let's now connect this matrix to our second input. Oh, this is what we get. It's not really what we want though. So let's go here and uh, let's delete this plus. It's not what we want. Let's connect this here. Let's simply switch one channel from this matrix since it's anyway has only one plane. And this we are going to uh, multiply by our audio amplitude. And if you don't know anything about how Gen works, I made a, a series of tutorials about all the objects that you can find in Gen. And in general, my past tutorials uh, uh, will give you all the information you need to know how to work in Gen. So great, uh, now we got our audio reaction. So one thing we could be interested into is to change the scale of the noise. So scale, let's actually change it for every axis like this exactly something like that so put the audio a bit louder all right so one thing we could do still is to basically take another matrix with three points uh, with uh, with one plane float 32 and give it the same dimension of our matrix that comes out from the dp kinect but give it also the interp1 attribute. So it will interpolate between the different uh, cells of the noise in order to give us a smoother uh, noise on our point cloud. So if we don't use it, you can see that the noise is, uh, is actually grouped. Stop the audio. Oh, and of course this keeps playing because the snapshot is keeping on sending out numbers. So let's actually put that change here in order to avoid this from happening. Great. So if the number is still the same, it doesn't output a new one. Okay, great. So you can see that the, the dots, let's make them a bit bigger, so with point size dollar one. So the dots that co create our point cloud, let's make them size two. They are not uh, offset individually by the noise, but they're offset in little uh, rectangles comprising uh, uh, several dots. And that's because the, the noise matrix is smaller than the matrix of the point cloud. So in order to make this disappear, could be an unpleasant thing, in order to make this disappear, we can connect the matrix with the same dimensions of our point cloud matrix, give it interp1, and this now should do the trick. So if we stop now... Right. So we can see that actually the dots are now individually offset now. Which is what we wanted. Cool. I'm a bit distorted. Yay! Let's activate the audio. And of course we can change our buzzes here. So let's get the attribute here of the noise. The attribute buzzes. Here. Let's select another buzzes. Say... Let's add a row. Let's make it scale that. Oh wait, we maybe want to also have a parameter to adjust uh, these... Uh, um, distortion amount, so this amount, let's say, let's start with one, let's multiply what comes out of that for a distortion amount, let's create another message, this amount, great, and we can make this bigger, or smaller. Oh, one thing is that the noise is now going the other direction because we reversed our mesh. So we actually may want to multiply this by minus one. Now we let it go in the other direction now. Right. Okay. So 
So this was it. Uh, we can add a jit slide to this matrix in order to have it uh, a bit more smooth than I start the distortion. So we could do something like that. Jit. Dot slide. Slide down 10. Slide up 10. I like to have the distortion go a bit smoother, but this depends always on the effect you want to reach. Cool. So, let's stop the audio. Uh, let me set the distortion amount to zero. So, great. So, here I am, undistorted. And uh, this was it for this video. Let's delete this ugly red stuff. Great. So if you like the video, well, I will be glad if you put a like to the, to the video and subscribe to the channel. This really helps me a lot. And if you really like the video and the channel, then you can check my Patreon in order to support the channel, get a lot of patches. So thank you again for watching and uh, see you soon in the next video. Ciao.